Yeah, hello everyone. I'm Bai Ji from Australia National University. And my study is about the responses of urban forests to climate change. And I did the case study in Canberra. As many speakers have identified, um, urban forests are beneficial for the urban dwellers because of their cooling effects, as well as other ecosystem services. But if what if the urban forests themselves are sensitive to climate change. So in my study, I firstly identified the relationships between climate change, urban trees, and their ecosystem services. We try to figure out that if drought events, warming temperature, elevated CO2 concentrations will affect the tree growth and the vitality, if they can lead to some mm, Mortality mechanisms like the carbon starvation or hydraulic failure. And uh, how about the characteristics of urban trees that can affect the capacity of the ecosystem services delivery? So in my study, we did the road survey in Canberra and we firstly select 24 species and uh, categorize them into the top species and the bottom species based on their suitability for the future climate conditions. Uh, for the top species means they are assumed to be more suitable for the future, while the bottom species are those vulnerable species. And then we compared the measurements with a triggers model named DSMART. At the right, right hand, we can see the the diagram, it is an example of the tree growth curve for certain species. But this model was established in the early 2000s. So the climate data in this model was based on that in the 1990s. And we assumed in the last 20 years, climate change have affected the tree growth in Canberra to some extent. So in the road survey, we measured the tree size and the trees tree height and the coron diameter as the parameters. And we also identified the vitality of urban trees. We use the indicators such as dead branches, coron dieback, it comes growth, hollows, and the uh, fungi fruitings. And we find some interesting outcomes in the data analysis. We categorize the samples into different groups for comparison and uh, for the first comparison is the top species versus the bottom species. We can find that the top species have a higher likelihood to be larger than production, while the bottom species are often overestimated in their tree size. And in another comparison, another comparison between different species, we can find that the drought tolerance species are uh, uh, more likely to be bigger and uh, have a larger canopy cover than projection, while the avoidance species have a higher likelihood to shrink themselves to cope with the water limitation or the warming temperature. In the comparison between evergreen and the deciduous species, we can find that except for two evergreen species, most of the others have a bigger uh, canopy cover or taller tree height, while for the deciduous species, it's half to half. And we also analyze the difference between old and young trees. The results show that young trees are often underestimated for their growth rate, while there is an overestimation for the tree size for old trees. And for the tree vitality, we try to establish the relationship between the uh, vitality and the tree size. At the right hand, we can see the diagrams. Mm. For eucalypts, uh, the species, the trees with dead branches are often under the growth curve. That means they have a smaller size than production, but such relationship is not so evident for the Quakers. So that means there's a species different difference. Yeah. And uh, for coron dieback, we can also find the negative relationship between tree size and uh, uh, stress 
incidents. That means current dieback can affect the capacity of ecosystem services significantly, but it's not. But it is not true for the epicomic growth. We can find that in quakers, the epicomic growth can restrict the tree growth for quakers, but uh, cannot affect that for pruners. So we identify that epicomic growth, even it has been assumed as a stress signal, but it does not affect the capacity of ecosystem services delivery so significantly. And at last, we use some, uh, we use the system thinking to get some implications for future urban forestry. So the first one is um, appropriate species selection is quite important for future urban forest management because as we have shown that some species can even benefit from climate change with warmer temperature, they can grow faster, but others are more vulnerable to the, the changing conditions. And climate change is better for newly planted trees because they can grow faster at their young age and provide considerable ecosystem services at an earlier earlier stage, but we need also to consider the higher frequencies for maintenance. We may need a higher frequency for watering and uh, maintaining the health conditions. And last, we identified a hastened life circle for urban trees. Um, with, um, as tree grows up, the value of ecosystem services and the cost of maintenance will increase accordingly, but after a certain age, the venue for ecosystem services will keep stable, but the cost will continue increasing. That means after that certain age, we need to replace the tree for the cities, but climate change will shorten the period of E of year we need to replace them. So a husband life circle will be expected. Yeah, that's my studies. Thanks for listening. Thank you, everyone.